So I just rolled out of bed, just had about 12 hours solid sleep, went to bed about 8 o'clock, got up about, I think it's just after 8 o'clock now, solid 12 hours sleep, just boom! When you eat enough carbohydrates, your body produces enough serotonin, which we go to melatonin, which helps us sleep. Sleep is critical if you want to regenerate, feel well, achieve your weight loss goals. Trying to achieve your weight loss goals without getting enough sleep is like trying to build a house without any walls. You know, you, it's, it's not really going to happen, is it? It's not really going to happen. So I've had my litre of water, start my breakfast. You can see that. That's how many bananas I'm going to be eating today. They don't go spotty. They don't go spotty, but they just start to break off. Like if you see, they come off really easily like that. So they're a Thai variety. They're called the Guay Hom. It's a really good banana. My favorite banana in the world, really. Well, one of my favorites, because there's so many different banana varieties out there. They're all pretty damn good, but the banana, the Guay Hom, definitely a favorite. So question of the day, Harley, what's the deal with glycogen? Glycogen is what we call, in the medical world, stored glucose in the muscle, the livers, and the blood. That's where we store our glucose, muscle, livers, blood. Stored glucose called glycogen. When your glycogen runs out, you enter ketosis, where your body's turning fat into sugar to fuel the cells. And you feel shit, you feel moody. You got no fucking energy at all. Your stamina is just like, boom! Your strength is boom! Everything's fucking boom, down in the fucking holes. Just read all the low carb paleo primal forums about people just, you know, floundering and flaking and crashing on when they hit ketosis and they're trying to do sport or just trying to look after their children or trying to be a good business person or whatever or good partner in their relationship. When you're on ketosis, boom, crashing big time. But there's, so why do people promote this ketosis scam, Dr. Atkins fad? Why do people promote it? Well, there's this whole misbelief that if you don't burn all your glycogen, you can't uh, start burning fat. <laughs> That's their whole premise, is if you want to get lean, you gotta eat no carbohydrates and just be in ketosis all the time. And, and 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 if you've got any glycogen excess and you don't burn it off, it's gonna get stored as fat. I'll tell you what. I've been vegan for coming up eleven years now. High carb vegan, overeating every single fucking meal on carbohydrates, keeping my fat low, overeating on carbohydrates every single meal. First it used to be rice and oats and barley and corn and aromanth and quinoa and millet, potatoes, yams, things like that. And then it's become fruit, simple, sugary, high fructose fruits like bananas, dates, mangoes, jackfruit, chumpadak, grama chumma, mangoes, grapes, melons, oranges, citrus, sugary, sugar, sugar filled, glucose rich, fructose rich fruits. Every meal, overeating according to the gurus, doing right, eats too much fruit and he's going to put on a lot of weight. But reality is, if it made you fat, I'd be fat. Fair would be a fat. We hardly train at all. Yeah, we, we're fit. We're very, very fit. But we don't do much training. We just eat healthy, get lots of sleep, and we love to live the adventure lifestyle. Simple as that. So, in theory, if the paleo low carb primal quacks, hacks, were correct, then I would have to deplete my glycogen every single day in order to not store body fat. What am I, like 2% body fat, 3% body fat or something like that? The question I got asked today was, do my glycogen stores have to be depleted, otherwise I'm going to store fat? In other words, they're saying, if you don't use up all your glycogen every day, it gets stored as fat, which is fucking rubbish. <laughs> The last time I depleted my glycogen, let me think. Last time I fucking hit the wall, last time I felt really shit and entered ketosis. I got close to it in a marathon last year. I got pretty close, but not. I wasn't entering ketosis. I got close though. My performance started to go downhill. You know you're entering ketosis because your performance starts, it goes like that, solid, 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 then it's 
So my performance in the mouth and the song, 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 and it starts to drop a little bit. Oh, I finished, so I was all right. Last time I depleted my glycogen stores. Come on, Harley, think, 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 think. I reckon it was, uh, I reckon it was 2004. 2004, I did a bike race, and we're riding home, and I just bonked full on. But even then, I, I, I just a little bit bonked. You know, I didn't really go into the full on ketosis thing. Man, it's, it's fuck, when, when was the last time it happened? I reckon it's probably 2002 when I cycled across Australia, and one time when I had, I just literally ran out of food, and I was creeping, I started crying. I reckon it would have, 2002. 2002 was the last time I de depleted all my glycogen stores. So I'd say, yeah, 2002, last time I depleted my glycogen stores completely, depletely, completely, depleted, depletely. Is that a word? That's the last time I depleted, de that's the last time I depleted my glycogen stores. Coming up 10 years. Coming up 10 years is the last time I fully just exhausted my glycogen stores. That's the last time I did it. And now... You know, I'm still like single digit body fat levels. So how does that work? So what happens to excess carbohydrates? What the fuck happens to excess carbohydrates you eat? On your weight loss journey, people are going, carbs, 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 don't eat the carbs, don't eat the carbs. Carbs are the slimming foods. You need carbohydrates to burn fat. Otherwise your your mood goes down and you don't want to do shit. You can't do nothing. It's like putting the fuel in the car. You gotta put the fuel in the tank to get the engine going. You've got to put the carbs in the tank to get the engine going. You want to burn the fat, load up on carbohydrates. Most people think of carbohydrates as Big Macs, cheesy meat lovers pizza with a cheese filled crust. The reality is, carbohydrates, rice, potatoes, fruits, starches, quinoa, millet, aromat, things like that. Low fat, high carb, plant based, vegan starches. Carbohydrates, fruits. That's what carbohydrates are. So when you hear me talking about carbohydrates, I'm not talking about chocolate, milk, or fatty, greasy, cholesterol, saturated fat, heart, heart attack foods like that. I'm talking clean, lean, mean plant foods with fruit being like the, the pinnacle because fruits are so nutrient dense and it tastes great. So that just totally debunks the whole carbohydrate myth that you have to deplete your glycogen stores otherwise it gets burned as fat. But where's the science behind that? Because I can just talk about my personal theory and my personal experience, single, single digit, you know, 3% body fat after 11 years carbohydrate feeding every single fucking meal, but where's the science? How does that, how do we explain Duran Riders got 3% body fat after 11 years in the high carb program? How do we explain that? There's something called dietary thermogenesis. Dietary thermogenesis, look it up. Excess carbohydrates you eat, oxidizes fat. Simple as that, simple as that. So look it up, dietary thermogenesis. So next time one of your low carb paleo primal friends or you're reading Mark Sisson's forum or Rob Wolf or Sally Fallon or any, any people like that are saying that watch the carbohydrates, carbohydrates make you fat, um, don't eat too many carbs. You say, well actually, Mark, Sally, Rob, Sean Croxton, Gary Torbs, Lauren Cordain, whoever, you guys are actually wrong. Um, excess carbohydrates, uh, there's a word called dietary thermogenesis. There's a there's a thing called dietary thermogenesis, look it up, look it up, that's why you never see any fat carbohydrate munches, ever, ever. You, know, you don't see any long-termers who are fat. You might see some people who are a bit floppy because they don't, they don't train at all, but they're still trim people. If you look at their diameter, they're small. They might be floppy because they just don't use their body at all, they just sort of do nothing, which is cool, but it's not good for your health. So if you want to achieve your weight loss goals, you got to smash in the carbs, keep the fat low, under 10% of total calories, 10 grams of carbohydrates per kilo of body weight per day, and if you're going out riding your bike or whatever, one gram of carbs per kilo of body weight per hour, and just live the adventure lifestyle. And if you limit your carbohydrates, you are going to limit your ability to live at your peak levels every single day. You're going to limit your ability to, to get the 12 hours sleep so you can recharge. Today's is going to be a cracker day. This whole weekend is going to be a cracker weekend because I'm just so carved up, slept and hydrated. It's going to be a fucking awesome weekend. So don't believe the hype that you have to deplete your glycogen stores because excess glycogen gets burned via dietary thermogenesis. Simple as that. And the reality is that, you know, if, if, 
if I had to burn my glycogen stores every single day, if I had to burn, if I had to bonk, when you run out of glycogen, it's called bonking or heating the wall. And you go to watch, go to a marathon, go to a marathon and go to the, the 20 mile mark. So ride, so ride your bike to the start, watch everyone's face, everyone's happy and chirpy, and then ride your bike to the 30 mile mark, the loop, cut across, whatever. Just sit down there and wait. Just watch. Watch for the fastest runners to come through. Just watch, sit there for an hour or two hours and just watch people coming through. And then you'll see the transformation of what happens when people go low carb. When they run out of glycogen, that's what happens to their mood, their performance. Try and, try and get them to smile. They'll be like, fuck off, you fucking idiot. Fuck it on, you know. So that's, that's reality there. So what these people do is they say, you have to burn all your glycogen every day. It's fucking bullshit. It's absolute bullshit. I'm sorry. It's, it's rubbish. Because if that was true, and I haven't depleted my glycogen fully for almost 10 years, <laughs> it's nonsense. So that's your answer, dietary thermogenesis. Look it up, and then please post your comments down below. Send me some information of someone who's a, a fat, long-term, high-carb, low-fat, vegan, fruit bat, rice munch, or whatever. Send me the details, like link me to their blog or whatever, so I can look it up and, and, and share, because I've got a $10,000 reward for anybody who can uh, show me the fat, long-term, carb muncher. $10,000, I've got the money, you can guarantee that. So I want to give it to someone. So I've got $10,000 for anybody who can show me the fat, high carbohydrate, low fat, under 10% of total calories, long-termer, fruit muncher, rice muncher, whatever, vegan. If you can send me their details, their blog, or you know, give me the data, I'll give you $10,000. That's my word. That's my word. That's how confident I am on this program. $10,000. Can you take it from me? I've got it. We'll give it to you via PayPal. That's the competition. Please share that message around. Don't forget to hit the like button if you like this video. And subscribe to my channel because I'm always putting out awesome videos for weight loss, health, lifestyle, loving the life. I'll see you next video. Thanks for watching. Carb up. Carb up, because I'm sure gonna. Gotta get a sweat up. If you wanna get fit, you gotta do it. If you wanna stay fat, you gotta keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing nothing. Keep eating shit.